Ion Memphis Talk Show. Ion Memphis, wall-to-wall conversations with top doctors, community leaders, and people just like you, focused on the health and everyday human conditions in the Bluff City. Ion Memphis with Betty Lamar. Live from Memphis, it's the Ion Memphis Talk Show with host Betty Lamar. Ion Memphis is wall-to-wall conversations featuring top doctors in the medical community, business leaders, and social concerns in the Bluff City. Ion Memphis Live. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your intriguing and thought-provoking host, Betty Lamar. But it's not Betty Lamar. It <laughs> is the Ion Memphis Show, hosted by Dr. Robert Wagner. And Betty Lamar is in the studio, and we have a special guest with us this morning. Um, we're on uh, KWAM AM 990, FM 107.9. We'll be talking today for about an hour about bariatric surgery, nutrition, weight loss, vitamins, you name it. Um, we'll be streaming live on Facebook. Please um, go to that site so you can see us and call in with questions. Um, Betty's here with us, and uh, yes. she's going to say something to get me off the hook here. She was okay. busy, so I had, to, I, had to, I had to do her job for a minute. Well, yes, I had to get this live feed going. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and of course, thanks for tuning in to Eye on Memphis. Uh, for those of you who like to watch and listen, we are live on Facebook, and we thank you all for all of your questions and following the show weekly. Uh, you all know Dr. Wagner is the, is the master, and this is the bariatric hour. Our plan is to do this show monthly and where Dr. Wagner can cover some of these myths and misconceptions that you all have uh, out here about the reason you're not getting your self taken care of. But anyway, we'll be right back after this message uh, with the Master of Bariatric Surgery, Dr. Robert Wagner. Eye on Memphis with Betty is sponsored today by AM Diabetes and Endocrinology and Insulin Pump Center. Dr. Robert Wagner, bariatric surgeon. Get organized by Kelsey. Declutter your space, declutter your life. The Mail Center on Madison Avenue, your one-stop shop for shipping, packaging, and more. Priceless details, mobile pressure washing services, and Bibles for China Thrift Center on Macon Road. And now, back to Eye on Memphis with Betty Lamar with her studio guest, Dr. Robert Wagner, bariatric surgeon, St. Francis Center for Surgical Weight Loss. Am I ready? I'm ready. Hey, now. All right. So we've got um, Hannah Ostendorf. Yes. Did I get it right? You did. All right. <laughs> Hannah is um, our superstar uh, dietitian at the Weight Loss Center at St. Francis. So I brought her on today. Uh, you all know me. I'm the... A surgeon there. I, I just, I do the surgery, but um, Hannah takes care of the patients, gets them ready for surgery, um, sees them in the hospital while they're there, and then sees them, you know, pretty much for the rest of their life. To be honest with you, they, she, they have access to her 24-7, 365. They've got her cell phone, her oh, email, no. <laughs> email um, phone. <laughs> her home address. Sometimes they just show up at her house with questions <laughs> about nutrition. She's getting about like that. So anyway, I brought Hannah on today because I get a lot of questions um, about nutrition, and you know I like to talk about the surgery, but Hannah is definitely an expert um, in the dietary nutrition arena. So uh, I'm going to introduce her, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, like where she trained and how she learned about. Oh no, tell me this first. What's the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist? Um, so a dietitian uh, is someone who's had formal training. We've been through an undergraduate study. How many years? Four years. Four years what's of a nutritionist? A nutritionist is someone who can call themselves a nutritionist. I can call my dog a nutritionist. Really? Mm -hmm. So it's insulting. It if is. If I were to insulting. say, "Hey, here's my nutritionist," you'd be like, oh, "Excuse me." Worked a little hard to get where I am today to okay. be called a dietitian and credentials. So. So dietitian's legit. Yes. And where did you? We're the you, real thing. We're the real thing. And where did you go to school? Um, University of Alabama, and then for my internship, San Antonio. Okay, and you've been. In Memphis, how long? Two years. Two years. Is this your first job? This is my first job. Why did you want? <laughs> why did you want to work with bariatric patients? Because it takes a, a special, you know, type of person and personality to, to do this type of work. 
Yeah, so I got into bariatrics um, during my internship. Um, it was our only outpatient rotation that we did, um, and I just fell in love with it because the environment kind of matched what I saw myself as a dietitian. Mm -hmm. Were you work with a surgeon, like like a surgery yeah, center? Like I worked ours? with this um, surgery center with three different surgeons and a dietitian. Okay. Um, I fell in with, love with the fact that patients were eager to see you. They wanted to come and learn from you. Um, they wanted to exchange those unhealthy habits for those good habits. Um, I enjoyed seeing pretty much their progression in their stories for some like the transformation. Absolutely, the I mean, before and after. We don't understand how much we take for granted until you see these patients who yeah. can't even cross their legs or tie their shoes. Um, just so seeing that and being a part of their journey has really encouraged me. Yeah, and you see it every day. Every day. I mean, all day, every day in the clinic. And it's always different for each patient. Yeah, yeah we were talking. You know, before the show, about you know some of the patient stories and this and that. You've had you've had some good ones. You know, over the, how long have you been at the center? It's been it's been about a year. About a year now. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you've seen you know hundreds of patients come through. Um, so let's say I'm a new patient and I'm coming in. I've been let's say I've been to to my seminar. So when they come to see me, then they come to see you. So what kind of take me through what a new patient is going to do after they see me? So the first thing that we do is just kind of go over um, their white weight and height, mm -hmm. talk about how they got to their stage, if there's a life event that caused weight gain, mm -hmm. um, medications, um, or if it's just more of that gradual weight gain because of poor nutrition and mm -hmm. not exercising. Um, then we go further in depth and talk about what they do for their nutrition, how many meals, what's their schedule like. So that initial um, consultation could take half hour, hour. I've gone half hour all the way to like an hour and a half. And you're sitting really getting to the root, kind of the root causes. Yes. Of how did you get to 100, 150, 200 pounds overweight? Yep. How is it affecting your life? Because, you know, how did you again, get here? each person's schedule is going to be different. Yeah. And so by working with them and knowing exactly how they work is the best way you're going to be able to kind of help them out right. surgery. Right, right. I get it. So then after that initial, I know that they have to come and... There's classes too, right? They have two to, classes. Two classes. No, what do you learn in those classes? We load them with information. Um, they like get drinking out of a fire hose. You just point it, <laughs> point the information out, and let it flow. Give them like two big packets. Say, here you go. You're right. all done. No, um, we talk ab about the different surgeries, go into depth of how each surgery um, can affect them after, nutrition wise, what we expect them either their supplements they should be taking, how their nutrition is going to change after. What are some of the common questions I ask you? Um, the diet after surgery? Absolutely. What are they worried about? Excess skin. Yes. <laughs> Excess skin. Excess skin. What do you skin. tell them? Um, protein. Protein. Get an adequate protein. Uh, but they're going to have it. Oh, absolutely. It just, I tell them the same thing. I don't know if they don't believe me or they think they're going to exercise it off or whatever, but everybody, every patient... Win. If you yeah. lose 100, 200 pounds, I don't care what you do or who tells you what, you're going to have some loose skin. It's that being just, said, though, you can minimize it. You can, yeah. but you have to just accept the fact that you're going to have some. If mm -hmm. you know, You're not going to be able to get rid of all of it. And you can, but you know, that's a plastic surgery. And that's a cosmetic thing. But I, if that, and I, I tell people, if that's the reason you're not going to do this, that's a horrible reason. It's trivial. It. It's sure. trivial in the big picture. Um, and the other thing I get, I don't know if you get it, is um, they don't think they're going to be able to eat anything. Yeah, they think they have limitations. Yeah, like real, like I can only have a liquid diet for or the rest of my life. For the rest of or their life. That's what they think. <laughs> they don't even realize that we're going to teach them what to eat, I mean, how it's much. How everyone should be eating. After right. Surgery. How everybody. It's just smaller portions, right? Mm -hmm. Better food and the vitamins. Yes. So tell me about what there's certain vitamins you have to take. Yes. What, what yes. are those? Multivitamin with the iron, a calcium, and a B12. And that's it. So you take off all your medications, most likely, and these are the only things you should be on lifelong. Now, why is there, there one of the calciums is good versus you versus is it the citrate? It's the citrate. Is that the, the one you have to have? Yes, it's elemental, so you just. And what's the other better. one? Um, carbonate. Because people ask about that one, I'm like, no, that's that's not the one you need. Yeah. You need calcium citrate, and the B12 is because after I do the sleeve or the bypass, they cannot absorb it yeah. from the GI tract, so yep. they have to get it. There's three forms, right? Yes. What are they? Nasal spray, a shot, or a sublingual. Sublingual. And what do patients usually like the most? 
Is there one that dominates the others? They just use whatever. Um, nasal spray or their shot. Yeah, that's what I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sublingual one. I don't know if they. I don't know if if they don't get it, like or they're going to swallow it. But they like the nasal one. They love the nasal. And and then the shot is easy. You yep. just do once a month. And when a patient comes to the hospital, when they come in for the surgery, I give them the shot automatically, so they're good for thirty days mm-hmm. when they leave, and then they start on whatever regimen you have. So they come see you, do the initial, go to the classes, and they can either do them. I think there's what are they either two half day sessions, or they can do one full day, yes. right? And then they have the weigh ins. Now you don't do those. The weigh ins. The weigh ins before surgery, or do you do them all? We do the weigh ins if it's ten percent. They need oh, that's to lose right. 10% so if a patient's big, like let's say I got somebody come in and their BMI is sixty or greater, I think I have them lose ten percent. Mm-hmm. But for but for the insurance weigh ins, we don't do that. We don't do those. You don't do those. Mm-hmm. They got to go to their primary care or their referring doctor. So they'll they do those outside. They get approval. Now right before surgery, you know I have that liver shrink diet, and there's lots of you know, <laughs> oh my God, what is that gonna? What does that mean? What's gonna? You know, what am I gonna be able to eat? So tell us what the liver shrink diet is. So the liver shrink diet is just what it says, shrinking the liver so that you can right. operate. And so I can in. see what I'm doing. Yeah, um, There's food on it, which is a big misconception um, for our clinic. So you, all you're doing is substituting two of your meals with a protein shake or a protein bar and then having one actual meal. But you have like snacks in between as like right. a fruit or a veggie. Yeah. So it's okay. not. Uh, let me do this before we go to the liver, because I have a question. And actually, I have a, uh, a couple of questions from Facebook already. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go back and talk about the liver a little more, and I have a a question about insurance. Okay. Okay. She says she's at work, and she wants to get that answer before she go back from her break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Isle Memphis. This is the Bariatric Hour with my very special guest, Dr. Robert Wagner, and sitting to my right, Ms. Hannah. Thank you for watching Conversations with Betty Lamar. Conversations are focused on people like you uplifting the city of Memphis. Visit Betty's YouTube channel, Betty Lamar Memphis, for more great shows. Be sure to tune in on Mondays at 7 p.m. for Medical Talk with Betty on Xfinity Comcast Cable. And now, back to Eye on Memphis with Betty Lamar with her studio guest, Dr. Robert Wagner, bariatric surgeon, St. Francis Center for Surgical Weight Loss. Hello, and welcome back to Eye on Memphis. We're having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, My very special guest today, Dr. Robert Wagner, uh, with the medical director at the St. Francis Center for Surgical Weight Loss. And we have a dietitian, uh, Hannah, I'm not going to even try to. Cause Ostendorf. I was, Ostendorf. I didn't German. Want to, German. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to assassinate your name. Okay. Two dots There's two head. dots over the O. Okay. So but anyway, cool. Dr. Wagner, we have a caller online. Oh, okay. Great. A caller. Hello, caller. Hi. Sounds like somebody is traveling. <laughs> yes, this is Stephanie. And yes, I am traveling. Okay. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Where are you going? Good. Well, actually, I'm here in Chicago right now. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's my hometown. Um, I know it is, and I wanted to um, just drop in and tell you that I'm watching the segment right now and uh, listening to you guys and wanted to thank you for um, kind of popping in on me and saying hello. Yeah. I really appreciate that so very much. How are the bariatric beauties? (laughs) <laughs> wonderful you know what look we're getting more beautiful every day what's the next event <laughs> well the next event is the arm clinic which starts 8-1 and so we're doing a very um a 30-day uh kind of clinic to work on our arms and get those toned up and looking really good so the ladies want sexy arms so that's what we're going to be working on <laughs> All that's, right. That's fantastic. <laughs> Count me in. Gosh. Yeah, so, you know, I'd like to come to that. Is what I have to give I'd like them, some sexy so. arms. That's, I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> when is that again? Oh, I might yes. have to come to that. <laughs> oh, yes. I've got some guns, Dr. Wagner. I've got those arms. I sent, Betty, I sent Betty a picture so she could show you. I work on those guns all the time. <laughs> that's great. So that's really important, but. I just wanted to pop on and just say hello. No, as well thanks for to calling. Hannah. It was great oh, to no see problem. you. It's a couple of weeks now. It's been 
Um, and I like hearing about your group. I know you've got quite a little following on, is it on your Facebook or your social media? Um, yes, I do. You know, for yes, promoting, you know, how the surgery changed your life and you kind of want to, you know, what's the expression, pay it forward, um, to other people, which I think is fantastic. Um, you don't it take is. for granted, you know, what you've done and you, you've put a lot of work into it. And so, it, you know, it yes. shows it pays off and I'm, I'm glad you're really happy with the result. Yes, sir, I am. You know, the group on Facebook is Amplify with Steph Lynn, and it's uh, composed of women who mostly had bariatric surgery, and some of them haven't. Mm -hmm. But it's been such a wonderful experience for me to be able to go out and talk within the community, motivate people, exercise with them, talk about uh, your diet and nutrition, and, you know, it's really important. So, Uh, Do you you have a minute to talk? Because this this is something I want to talk about. (laughs) Do you have a minute, or am I keeping you from the Cubs game, or what's what's going on yeah. today? Are you going to go on the architectural <laughs> you tour, be, or the Museum of Science and Industry? Game. Huh? Can you, you talk for a minute? Me, I certainly can. All right, so when you travel, and I want to get <laughs> Hannah, Hannah's in on this, too. So you've yeah. had gastric bypass. Yeah. And so some I'm, sometimes I'll get a journal, and I'll be reading about you know the challenges after surgery, and one of them is traveling, because when you mm-hmm. go out of town... Now you're thrown off of your normal routine of eating with, you know, your portion control and maybe food choices, taking your vitamins, exercise. So when you travel, like going to the to the city, how do you plan your meals? Like, do you bring stuff with you? Do you have a, a meal prep that you take with you and all your stuff? How do you do that? Yes, that is an excellent question because I just put that in my group yesterday. Uh, One of the things that I've done actually since bariatric surgery is I always have a cooler with me. Mm. And so in that cooler are the things that I know that I can eat and I know that I can Hannah's going to tell you if if the right things are in. What's in the cooler? And this will be a Hannah-approved cooler. (laughs) Be honest. Okay, so in the Be honest. What's in there? (laughs) Okay, in there is my water. I always take a, a protein shake or two. Um, I love coffee, so I take my decaf coffee with me because you always can't get it, but you certainly can heat it up. Okay. And um, I have Greek yogurt in there, which I love. Greek yogurt, right? Uh, Usually fruit. Um, I'll have things like uh, maybe tuna, cheese, crackers, so things like that that I know that I can eat that are uh, really quick to eat. So when you're eating out Um, in the city, mm -hmm. because Chicago, there's, there's probably two or three good restaurants there, I'm guessing. Oh, Two or three thousand yes. <laughs> places to eat that are all fantastic. So when you go out, I mean, how do you? What, what do you tell them when you get the menu? Like, do you try to modify well, the menu? Or I do modify the menu, but a lot of the times I typically know where I'm going ahead of time, mm-hmm. so that gives me an opportunity to look at the menu. Okay. Um, and so I'll have an idea of what I want to eat. And right now, chicken. I don't really eat chicken anymore, or beef, or pork. I mostly eat seafood and fish. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking for the grilled fish, the salad, the baked potato, the vegetables. And what do you and tell, so what do you when tell I go people out, to take it's pretty easy to manage. Protein okay. bars, protein shakes. Yeah. But people yeah. don't understand is convenience is not always just fast food. I mean, you have those tuna packets. You have those P3 packets now. Um, so right. You have a lot With of With the options. cheese and the nuts. The cheese, the and nuts, the, the protein dining. things, yeah. The cheese sticks are perfectly fine. Okay. And the pre-made protein shakes that are already either mixed in a container or you take the powder and you make a little shaker bottle and you can mix them that way. Um, Exactly. So how many – here's a question for you to to quiz you, make sure you know what you're doing. So how many grams of protein are you getting a day? Well, it's always been 60 to 80 grams per day. Right, that's good, and, right? Exactly. Yeah, six yes, to eighty. That is good. Right, that way your hair doesn't <laughs> fall out. Good. Exactly. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> People <laughs> ask me that. Want those sexy I have a friend, arms. and they had a sleeve and a bypass, and they lost all their hair. I'm like, well, they weren't eating enough protein. <laughs> right, you um, weren't eating enough protein, so yeah. you have to get that protein in through the shakes. And you know, Premier is thirty grams automatically. So once you finish that one shake, is that the you're one from Costco? Done for the day. Yes. Is that the yes. Premier <laughs> shake from Costco? You buy by the case. Yeah. Everybody seems yes, to like those. Get it Different flavors. Yeah, some of them are just too sweet. I don't know. There's some yes. that, I don't know if you've tried yeah. out there that people, you know, they'll, they'll they'll buy a case of them, which is not a good idea because then they, they'll take one and like, oh, I can't, and they can't take it back. So to buy one or two and then test out what you like and then find the one. Everybody likes that Premier one. Um, yes, Premier is very good. Um, and you know what? If you have a group of friends, you guys can decide who's yeah. going to buy what. 
and then you just break up the box and kind of share. Yeah. Then you have a variety pack, what is, and everybody what, what can patient, figure out Hannah, their what, what do um, patients, what, what do you tell them when, when they ask for a recommendation? You tell them Premier? Premier. Or, or, I tell them Premier. Yeah, or a bariatric-specific one, just because they're not as sweet, because they understand that taste is changes yeah. after surgery. Well, that's the other thing. S- Stephanie, did your taste change? Yes, People it tell is. me all the time that happens. <laughs> Yes, you know what? I really can taste food really well now. Um, I think without all the extra salt and sugar, I can really taste the freshness and the crispness, crispness and mm-hmm. vegetables. It's really weird, but you know, I find that I like the fresh taste of vegetables and fruit. You know, more, more so than, than before surgery. Oh, more so than before surgery. Yeah. So I really love them. <laughs> what about smells? Sometimes people say their their smells uh, change. For a while, things like chicken, the smell of it, and beef bothered me. Mm-hmm. But that was within the first year. After that, it Kinda didn't bother well. me as much. Right. So, you know, I'm headed toward year three here in September. So I'll be seeing you guys for my three-year, you know, appointment. You'll be seeing Hannah, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, I will. For, for your, Hannah, for your and three I'm going to stop in and say hello to you. <laughs> yeah. But I will see Hannah. And Hannah, just welcome to the St. Francis family. And I'm looking forward to meeting you. Absolutely. Yeah, she's, yeah, Hannah's fantastic. It's so hard to find good people, so we're glad to have her. That's why I brought her on today. She's very personable for the new patients coming in. She has taken over with the old patients, you know, taken interest in, in their stories and learning about the people that she hadn't, you know, seen before. So she, she's very good. But she's overwhelmed. Oh, good. You know, it's, <laughs> yes, it's overwhelmed. There's so many patients. But it's a good thing. Yeah, that need to see her, and the, the questions just keep coming, you know, you know like, like today. I'm Speaking of questions, what what is the number to call in here? So, yeah, so we'll take any calls. We can really talk about anything. I mean, okay, because I have a, a list of questions here for you on Facebook. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we talk about the weather. All right, well, thank you for calling us, Miss Stephanie, and about. sharing your Packers. journey. And I'm looking forward to working with you. Don't forget to call me when you set the Zumba class up. Okay. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, I definitely will. Dr. Wagner, thanks again. It's been great talking to you. And Hannah, I look forward to seeing you in September. I do, too. Thank you so much. Bye, Beth. All right, Steph. See you. Bye, Miss Steph. Bye. Okay, now I have a question here for you, a list, actually. But uh, will insurance cover someone uh, that doesn't have any pre-existing issues uh, except diabetes, even if the BMI is enough to have for the surgery. And then number two, she said, being that I'm in Hawaii, could I come to Memphis and have the surgery? And if I think <laughs> of more, I would send you more questions during the show. All right. So a Facebook question from Hawaii. Yeah, she about is. About insurance. Yes. Is that the gist of it? Well, she's she's a Memphis. She uh, She's originally from Memphis. Got it. She set in with you on surgeries at the, oh. at the center. All right. So here, here's what I can tell you about insurance. Um, all insurances cover the surgery, including Medicare. We take Medicare, but all the private insurances cover it. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, um, Cigna. Cigna. There's so some of the bigger providers. The the question is, is did the employer that provides the insurance check that benefit box when they got the insurance for 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 the employees? If the employer checked bariatric benefits as a benefit that he that they want to cover, then you're good to go if you meet the requirements, which, you know, BMI 35, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, these type of things. It doesn't matter if you have every comorbidity and your BMI is 50 or 60 or 80. If, if 80? It, whatever. Oh, who? 100 I, I've done, 100, even over 100. You know, the, really? The, the, we'll talk about that in a minute. But yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, uh, 35 on up, the 35 is a lower limit, but it, okay. I don't care how big you are or how sick you are. If you don't have the benefit from the employer, even though the insurance would cover it, if they didn't pick that on the, on the coverage, then no matter what you do or what I say, you're not going to get it. And, and I can write letters and we can all, you know, lobby on the patient's behalf and, and it doesn't matter. We, we've been doing this long enough. The employer has to give you the benefit. If you have the benefit, you can get the surgery. Oh, wow. So pay attention to that. So, yes, either lobby your employer to change the plan or um, when, when it comes time for open enrollment, look for the plan that has bariatric benefits or bariatric coverage. Some of them do, some of them don't. And what's tricky is 
you know, they'll have the one with, is it you know, like the low deductible or low copay or whatever? Mm-hmm. And people will choose that and or even or that or they'll choose the high deductible, high one, and that won't have it. It'll be the other one. Mm-hmm. So you have to specifically look for the plan that has the bariatric weight loss surgery benefit and pick that one. That's a good conversation to have yeah. when you're on the phone. And a lot of times people have to wait like a year, like oh, for yeah. open enrollment, and they have That's to get the other event. and they have to get the other plan so yeah. that they can get it. I think Stephanie said she had to wait seven months. Yeah. Because yeah. it wasn't she wasn't on the plan. Okay. Well, Hi, people Betty. can also cash pay. I'm gonna bring it up. Cash pay. Yeah. We take cash. Okay. Credit cards, you know. Okay. We take the real thing. You as know long as I mean? we have a balance. Yeah, well, cover. you have to pay. Here's, the, <laughs> I just work for the hospital, I want to pay but for mine the hospital will gladly accept surgery. accept payment in full. I think a, a gastric sleeve is around fourteen thousand, and a gastric bypass is around nineteen thousand, and that includes pretty much everything. There might be some pre-op testing that's not in there, you know, maybe some pre-op evaluations, but that's pretty much you know for your stay, for anesthesia, and this and yeah. that for the whole well, thing. I think it's worth it to so save it's, your it's life. It's very worth it. It's 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 a bargain. If you look at, you know, how it's going to change your life and what you've spent in the past 20 or 30 years, you know, becoming morbidly obese, it's a bargain to, to get to not be morbidly obese for 14 or 19,000. Okay. Hi, Betty. Hannah? Well, all your health, like, issues are going to rack up yeah. anyways. True. Now, how often do you see diabetes and high blood pressure? Just go away. At almost every single patient. It's amazing. Yeah. It's almost... And it's like almost too good instantly to be true. too. Yeah, it's right away. A lot of times it's within, you know, the first few months after surgery. They're they're off half their medications. Um, they just feel so much better. And, you know, there's there's savings in that you don't even realize, I think. So it, I think it really is a good deal all the way around, whether insurance pays for it or not. Question. Uh, hi, Betty. I'm a longtime follower of your show. My son plays football, and I'm terrified of his health. Uh, he has, what is this, arrhythmia? An arrhythmia, like a heart yes. arrhythmia. Yes, and if he gets, if he gets hit too hard, will he go into cardiac arrest with his weight? If he's overweight already, I, I yeah, I don't think I don't think a uh, a football uh, tackle would would cause him to go into you know cardiac arrest or an arrhythmia. Um, playing football, being obese, and having an arrhythmia arrhythmia will absolutely put him at risk to, you know, have a cardiac event that would not be good. Okay. So, you know, he needs to lose weight. And playing football is not how you lose weight. That's what I, people don't understand. You don't, you don't play a sport to lose weight. You lose weight to play a sport. Oh, you okay. don't play football to get in shape. You get in shape to play football. So, you know, you've got this high school kid out there, you know, doing these hot summer practices with all the gear on. He could be 100 pounds overweight with an arrhythmia. You know, he's not drinking his water. You know, he's, you know, a little dehydrated. Um, you know, he's fatigued and his body's already under stress. So that's not, that's not a good setup, even for a high school kid. So, okay. So is there a limit for bariatric surgery? Uh, and is there an age limit or just a limit, I guess, age limit? And I have acid reflux. Can I get surgery? So what's the youngest patient you've seen? 18. 18. I think I've done, yeah, 18 is probably Hanazine. I've done 16 and 17 a few years back, and I am um, certified to do pediatric population. We have a pediatrician at the hospital sees the patient, so I do pediatric uh, population w- when that you know, need arises. So uh, you know, 16, 17, 18 is doable. Um, what was the other question about acid reflux? Yes. They have it. They want, they want to know if that, they can have surgery with it? Yes. So... You know, morbid obesity, a lot of patients have reflux. Yes. Do you see it? All the time. Uh, but one of the indications to get the surgery is having acid reflux. What we do is so different. It's not a fad diet that you're going to do for six weeks. It's going to be a lifestyle change for the rest of your life to what keep the weight the off. Balloons? No, no balloons. <laughs> We're not putting in any balloons. Uh, I said okay. last time, that's for the Germantown housewife that her daughter's going to get married in six months <laughs> and they got to lose 20 pounds to fit in the dress. Get a balloon. <laughs> Then, Go get a balloon, pay $10,000, get the balloon, and that's what it's for. Or diet and exercise. Oh, Yes, or, <laughs> or you could just put down, you know, maybe yeah. get on the treadmill a little bit more and fit in the dress so that way. Is- Eye on Memphis Talk Show. Eye on Memphis, wall-to-wall conversations with top doctors, community leaders, and people just like you, focused on the health and everyday human conditions in the Bluff City. Eye on Memphis with Betty Lamar.